It has been the official UK soap crossover week this week, where familiar faces from your familiar soaps have popped up in unfamiliar places. Who knew Doc Cotton could shear a sheep and Eric Pollard would be such a hit at the pride of Albert Square, the gay bar? Well, Soap in the Box is joining in the fun. I'm bringing together four famous faces for a very special episode in Vision as well for our YouTube channel. It's very early in the morning as well. All in aid of climate change. So it's my pleasure to welcome one by one, officially an OBE, start of Still Open All Hours, goodness gracious me, Andy Stender. She also got pulses racing on Strictly Come Dancing this year. It's the brilliant Nina Wadia. Hello, Nina. Hey, everyone. <laughs> How are you? So, I mean, I I'm was thinking it. maybe it was the curse of homophobic Zainab that got you voted off of Strictly <laughs> early. <laughs> I think so. And that was really mean of them to put me up against two very handsome gay men. It was yes. like, I mean, it was a done deal, wasn't it, at that point? <laughs> now, if you could be in another soap, which one would it be? Oh, gosh, that's hard. I want to be in all of them. I want all to be of them, right, okay, just fine. Pops up in every single supermarket for at least one scene and wanting to buy the same food. I think that'd be um, really funny. Yeah, you, you could be the same food, character. Please? You could be the same yeah, character in every single well. soap, yeah. Um, okay, just so next, <laughs> my next guest took a casual 30-year break from the soap that made her famous around the world, <laughs> playing Melanie, whose most loved attribute is a laugh like a seal with a hernia. The brilliant <laughs> Lucinda Cowden. Hi, Lucinda. Oh, God, that was such a fantastic introduction. Thank you so much, Lee. That's all right. It was <laughs> a big break, everybody. wasn't it? You, I mean, I know you did pop back, actually, a few years before the... But it was basically oh, 30 but years. I was just walking down the Thames, you know. What, I didn't really pop back, so I'm still living in England then. So, oh. um, but yes, I did, 30 years. I know, just a quick 30 years between, um, <laughs> yeah, drinks, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> and how has it changed in the time you've been back? Heaps, and yet not. It's it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. It's sort of like um, there's things that are similar and there's things that are completely and utterly different. But, um, yeah, it's good. It's good. I think it's done leaps and bounds, um, Neighbours. I think it's um, it's got storylines that are, you know, much more inclusive and much. I think they've sort of come a long way. Yes, from, they have. From when although I was in the eighties and early nineties, yeah. Although there's no Mrs. Mangle, which is a shame. I know yeah. I was Mrs. Mangle momentarily. Oh, okay. were you? <laughs> that sounds like a tongue twister. <laughs> right. So three years. My next guess: three years is not a long time to be a resident in Hollyoaks, but more than enough time to be revealed as a notorious glove hand killer, killing just seven people. In, in her way. Um, so if you go around her house, be worried when she puts the marigolds on. It's the brilliant Sophie Austin. Hi, Sophie. Oh, hello. Sorry, I'm hardly awake, I think. I know. You, <laughs> I, I didn't realise you killed seven people in I didn't realise that either. Actually. Did I kill seven people? <laughs> so blase. Gosh. I know. Well, I, I don't even know why she did it, to be honest with you. It just sort of changed quite a lot. So... <laughs> She came in as a nice girl, didn't she? Yeah, she went in to be a really nice girl. And then suddenly it was like, yeah, um, you're just going to kill. Then I used to get really worried that I that they hadn't told the people that I was going to kill them. And I, I think it was one point that I sort of was like, yes, I've got this scene. They're like, what scene? And I was like, um, no, no scene. Um, nothing. <laughs> um, anyway, which if you had to be. Oh, I didn't ask. Listen, no, let me quickly go back to you. Is it true that there is arch competition because not only between Sydney and Melbourne but but between home and away and neighbours are you literally like that yes oh, say yes so we hate each so. other <laughs> no I don't hate anyone I don't hate anyone from home and away I, I look you know I I prefer neighbours myself but you know that's just personal taste yes yeah and Sophie if you had to be uh a, a, if you could kill a character in another soap <laughs> Who would it be? Oh my god! You say Zainab. Let's <laughs> say Zainab. She was killed off off screen. No. I no, I can't answer that. I don't. I, I, well, actually, I go back and kill the person who killed me, Silas. He's oh, yeah, not very okay. nice. Yeah. But I love him as an actor, so uh, yeah, I'll go back to uh, Hollyoaks and do that. And my last guest, we have a true legend with us, spending more than forty-five years in Emerson. <laughs> 
<laughs> not quite, not quite. But it does now okay, say, and I don't you. know whether this is true, Nicola, on Wikipedia, it now says you are the longest serving actress in Emmerdale. I think maybe because Liz has left. And wow. none of that's true. Uh, she's won many accolades. It was just a shame they realised she could only remember one name. So playing Nicola, it is Nicola Wheeler. Hello. Aww, poor oh, me. poor Nicola. <laughs> <laughs> I've cast. <laughs> so are you the old are you the long oldest are you the longest serving am <laughs> I the oldest <laughs> I am older than the show um I don't know actually you might be right because Liz has just left that's amazing um, now that's brilliant that is an accolade it, you know what there's, there's lots of us who are back in it so like um Charity, the likes of Charity um, started before me, Emma Atkins, but she had a bigger break. We've all taken breaks. Not, I don't think any of us have stayed in it for the length of time, um, but I think she took a longer break than I did. So it, um, that might be true. Yeah, now, wow, what an accolade. And if you could be in another soap, which one would it be? Oh, I'd have to say probably Neighbours because I watched it as a kid. That was like, I mean, it was the soap that I chose to watch because obviously like Corey and Emmerdale, I watched because my mum watched it. Um, I didn't particularly yeah, like either, even though I've been to in watch both. Them. And then later it was EastEnders I chose to watch, but um, I think Neighbours were the, was the first one as a young person that I chose yeah. to watch. Yeah, we all watched Neighbours. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. it was part and parcel of the of our growing it was up, huge, wasn't it? huge, wasn't it? Yeah. Like a gateway soap. It, yeah, totally. <laughs> well, I always say this story and everyone's bored of hearing it, but I do remember when everyone skived our school, uh, at lunchtime, because it was only on at lunch when I was young, and the BBC had to put it on at tea time because too many people were missing the first half of the lesson after after lunch. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, my, oh, I used to watch um, Countdown with my mum when it was at, at tea time, and so I only ever watched the last 10 minutes of any Neighbours episode. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be like, what just what happened? Oh, okay. <laughs> I reckon you would have got everything you needed. Yeah. I did as well. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> oh, it was brilliant. And the theme song went on for about two hours as well. The same. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so it's a chance. First of all, we're going to get to climate change because that's why we are doing this. But uh, a bit of fun first. So we're going to ask each of you have got a question prepared. I've got one for Nina. So um, you've done, Nina, basically everything. Hollywood, Bollywood, stage, screen and film. How hard is a soap, do you think, compared to anything else? Is it kind of one of the hardest things? By far the most, it, I found it the hardest because of the um, the volume of work, but I also found it the most satisfying um, because you kind of, you end up belonging in a family. You become friends with the people you work with. You look forward to going into work because you kind of, it's all familiar. And as an actor, that's really hard. It's it's as close as you can get to a nine to five for an actor, you know? So it's like a, a place that you kind of really just look forward to going into. And, and no matter how dramatic the storyline, when you're in there for a long time, you laugh a lot through a lot of different things, a lot of different issues. So, yeah, soap's the hardest, but the most satisfying. It's true. We did a big storyline together, didn't we, when uh, Yusuf was uh, kind of abusing Zayn. And it was, it's, it's that weirdest thing you do, like, the heaviest days. Like, we had such heavy days with you, but you just, you know, creasing up laughing in between. It's the only way to get through it. You have to, otherwise you kind of, you know, actually start to become the character bit, which is kind of why I left, because my husband said it's her or, or me. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I was like turning into this character that he didn't like anyway. No one really liked her. So. <laughs> oh, we did. We love saying that. Nina, you've got a question for Sophie, I think. Yeah, I do, actually. So, so um, Hollyoaks is, I think, such a different soap because of just a lot of very naked men. Do you enjoy the soap? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's really funny, actually, because I started with a, a family, a group of like seven, was it seven or five lads? And they were all really, really good looking. And everyone yeah. used to be like, well, what's it like working with all the time? But um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it is known for its eye candy, isn't it? You can't, you know, you can't get away <laughs> from that. I mean, there's just beautiful people and you end up thinking, oh my God, maybe they think that I'm as, as attractive as that. You know, <laughs> so, gorgeous. yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not a bad place to work. And Sophie, do you remember they all used to, I remember that before they did their scene of like them running down the stairs for no reason without a top on, as you do in the middle of the day, but they would literally dive to the floor and be doing press ups for yeah. like five minutes to get to have, there. I never realised that made their muscles protrude suddenly. I know, and it was, it was me and Gillian who played the mother, and we were like waiting for them to do their press ups, and we were like, can we just get the scene done? Do you want to go and have lunch? Yeah, just need to get the bicep, you know. But no, they're all they're all absolutely brilliant though. I mean, they're you know great guys, so can't they complain. Are. I can't, I'm just gonna have to say sorry about me having no tooth to the viewers because I'm waiting uh, for this plant. I keep seeing it come up. 
I'm trying to do. I, I forgot. I've mi- I forgot my camera's on reverse, so I keep doing that way, and it's actually the wrong way. Lee, I've got some white tack. I could have brought it around <laughs> and shut it. In. <laughs> I should have just put in. Uh, Sophie, <laughs> you've got a question for Nicola. Yes, I do. Now, Nicola, would you rather see your character running the pub, running the vets, or the corner shop? Oh, um, not the pub because that means you're in a lot. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, on a, I'm at that acting stage in my life where I'm going, darling, just pay me the money, don't make me work. So yeah. I'm like, um, yeah, I think, <laughs> I mean, I'm gutted at the moment my character's in the cafe and I have to be in there to serve, you know, and so I get oh. the odd line here and there. Um, oh, corner, maybe corner the vets. Shop. She should be funny at the vets. I mean, she'd have to train. No, I've it, done probably. the vets. So I was a receptionist oh. at the vet. I've done it all. I've actually worked behind the bar and I've done, I have, did I work in the shop ever? No. Day, I do David's shop because the, we, we have loads of lovely little jelly things. So I could just eat all day as well. Nicola, Nicola's Nicola run the best cleaning service ever in Emmerdale, which actually employed, I mean, there's no disrespect to blind people, but obviously they probably wouldn't be the best cleaners. She actually employed a woman who was about 80 and a blind person as her cleaners to go out. But, but she was, I mean, the, the point of the story was she was ticking boxes in order <laughs> yes, that she yeah. open her business. So she did. She wanted somebody with a disability and somebody who was old because she wanted to, she said, I'm going to be <laughs> inclusive of everything. She wasn't doing it in any way to be kind and, and, and accepting and inclusive. She was just literally doing it so she could get her business set up. Um, and so Nicola, you've got a question for Lucinda. I have. So at its peak, Neighbours um, was massive and millions of people watched it over here in the UK as well as Australia. So I'm going to ask, I've had some pretty weird places that I've been recognised. When it was at its height of fame and millions of people knew your face, where's the strangest place you've been recognised? I think the beach. I think like coming out of the water after (laughs) I've been for a swim, there was this little girl that came up um, and she had like a piece of paper that was completely wet and a pen. Um, <laughs> and she came up and, and was like, can you? And I was like, um, uh, oh, yeah, uh, uh, sort of thing. But, yeah, I think that was pretty weird, just sort of like you wet. You, like I was, you know, I'd probably been dumped by the wave, you know, it was sort of like I was a bit sort of like, oh, okay. And, um, yeah, <laughs> The paper just fell apart, so it wasn't successful. <laughs> we had that on the well, beach. Lucinda, I mean, just the fact that you say that, um, oh, the weirdest piece was a beach, and all of us here in England are like, a beach, how nice to I be know. recognised oh, as a beach. I can't remember what a beach <laughs> looks like at the moment. And then Lucinda, <laughs> Lucinda, I can't remember who I asked you to ask a question to. Did I just say I, it? You, throw you one? You gave me a general. You gave me yes, a Yes, I gave you a general one. Yeah, okay, sorry, go. One. And so I wanted to sort of ask everyone, because I know that feeling of when you're reading your new scripts, if you know what I mean, and the last time you went, oh, I'm what? <laughs> oh, that's a really that good was, question. That was my general question to everyone. Like the last time you read a script and you went, I, are, are you serious? I'm, I'm. What was yours? I Lucinda think that was my. Because you got, you got, put, you're with Toadie now, aren't you? Melanie's with well, Toadie. That was, that was my, the whole, that affair with Toadie was a, was a, I was like, no, <laughs> hello, no. Um, but that was a bolt. And then another bolt uh, was, all the affairs, like finding out that she'd actually slept with virtually everybody she's ever worked with. And she's <laughs> him, him secretary. So, <clears throat> so I'm reading that going, I, I, I never realised I was quite that active. <laughs> Nina? So, was, that was, um, so, yeah, so I just wanted to put that That's out there brilliant. to everyone. That is brilliant. Of, of what, what, what that feels like. Um, I, I think for for me the the first the first thing was when I got the first script and I went she's Pakistani <laughs> and she's a homophobe. <laughs> no, but there was <laughs> there was one one where I was literally like oh my god how are we going to actually play this moment out and it was you know when when they said okay so we've got this huge storyline and um you know the argy bargy the roof falls down and oh, literally yeah. you're just going to be covered in ash and everything. And all I could think was, oh, I'm going to have to have a really cold shower in my porter cabin afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't worry about the acting. It's more about... It's, it's more comfort. about comfort. <laughs> yes. I Nicola? understand. 
Um, well, mine was, it was more of a fun one. I mean, I've got one where they paralyzed my arm, which was more of a, oh, great. <laughs> that's going to be, yeah. I mean, I've got it back now in typical soap world. I have got my arm back, but I had to have a paralyzed do. arm for about three years, which was just, it was a nightmare because people kept thinking there was something wrong with my arm. <laughs> and they're going, oh, the poor actress, what's happened to her arm? I was like, no, no, it is story, but they kind of forgot about it. But my, <laughs> but my fun one more recently was that Nicola and Mandy have a wrestling match. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. And they splattered all over us and it was ace. It was like one of those, you know, one of those really silly episodes you get to do where you just get to be an idiot. And it was it was great fun. So that was my last one of going. It was more of a what? Yay! You know. <laughs> and Sophie, <laughs> yours must be. I mean um, I think a lot of it was, yeah, I think it was like when you get a script and you'd be like, oh, they're leaving. Oh, that's a shame. You know, like, it, like you know, and also it was the fact of like how my character was able to like remove these massive male bodies and like <laughs> the size of me compared to, and I think there was one where I had like rolled them up in a carpet and put them in the van and chucked them off a cliff and I was like I don't know how I would do that and they're like it's fine we're just doing cutaways you know things like that <laughs> yeah. like, okay. and I'm sure the standing when I was there you know you used anyone to be the stand-in for the gloved hand killer because you would have the silhouette yeah. so you must have changed size probably her episode. <laughs> oh yeah, and then like yeah, it would be like one the day she'd be have massive. like nails yeah. on, and the next day she'd have a really like when it was just the, the image of the hands and the injection, a hairy like, really hairy hands, and then, <laughs> <laughs> the hooded claw coming the in. Guys yeah. in the wrist. <laughs> Right, we will get on to climate change um, because we're seeing the effects, obviously, of human-caused climate change everywhere. Thankfully, our planet is equipped with a powerful tool for stabilising the climate, which is nature itself. Um, now, protecting nature today means a better future planet for future generations. I mean, Sophie and Shane, you have a young... It's not Shane's here, Shane Moore, but Sophie, you and Shane have a young child. Do you worry? Do you kind of worry about what the future holds for, like, your next generation? Yeah, I do. And I, I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm not, I'm not totally clued up on a lot of climate change. And a lot of it is, which is my fault, is anxiety about that. And you sort of, right, yeah. for a long time, sort of like hid my head in the sand. But it's things like trying to, we, we actually have a vegetable patch that we grow a lot from. And it's trying to eat, you know, less meat, things like that, that I'm trying, you know, you know having one car and things like that but but it's interesting that even though willow's just started school the, the information that she comes back from school that they get taught at a young age about oh, that's great and stuff like that which is is great for us because it makes me have a conscious effort to be like i need to educate myself more but yeah it, i mean the, the whole thing is just scary and i think, and I think you're great. right i think a lot of people do bury their head under the sand yeah so i think that's why it's so important the, one of the biggest things is to talk isn't it which is why we're doing this i mean yeah. nature is one of the biggest things nicola you obviously look after bit you keep bees which are also you, in, you know because of um, everything going on are in serious decline uh but you've been really passionate about this and you've taught me quite a lot about it what kind of made you stand up and think about keeping bees well, my initial, I, I've been keeping bees for about eight years and it started with, we noticed that there was a decline in the insect population, which of course we, we need um, um, for growing vegetables, everything. It, it helps with pollinate for our food. And so I decided, oh, why not? You know, we have, I've got lovely grounds here. I've got a lovely big, big massive garden. And so I went around and asked all my neighbors, you included, um, saying, oh, um, do you mind if I suddenly, if I keep bees? And everyone was like, oh no, great, great. As long as we get free honey. And I loved it. I find them <laughs> fascinating as creatures. I find them that just amazing, all the waggle dance, how they communicate, what they do, um, how the hive works as a collective. Um, and I've had some disastrous years. I, I have, um, we have a lot of agriculture around here, but it's, it's um, mainly um, animal rather than um, crop. And further afield, there is crop farming. And I've had a couple of hives collapse. So I'm a little bit like somebody spraying something around here. I don't know who. I don't know how I'll get to the bottom of what they're doing. Um, and this is the main problem. It's intense farming. And intensive farming means that we have to protect the crops. And in doing so, we're harming other things like insects. But it, it, start, it it's cascades because the minute your in, insects decline, the animals that eat the insects decline, which would be like birds, and then their predators decline, and so on and so on and so forth. So it, it is really protecting the tiniest things, you know. Um, so that's where I started. But yeah. I agree with like Sophie. The thing when you've got a kid, the responsibility you've got the minute you have children is you've you've created a carbon footprint, and you know you have. And so 
I think I think when you've got children, you feel more responsible because I know already, I've, I, not that he's a burden to nature, but I've created something as a human being that might be in the future. So, you know, we, that's where I sort of started to get more and more responsible. So like you, I've done, we do veg and things. It's just trying to be as green as you can. Yeah. But then having said that, year, I still want to Barbados. <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. With, be, with bees as well, obviously, there's been a big thing, hasn't there, to grow, let your parts of your garden grow well, which a lot of we saw in the local area. Yeah, what, what, what they're asking as well is don't cut back in autumn. What everyone does is they clear their garden out, they cut all the seed heads down, everything. Don't because it's a home to insects. Nature will, and this works, I'm, I'm telling you, because we, we've done it with our flower bed, leave it to die back on its own over winter. You have got yes. way less weeds in spring, way less weeds. You don't you barely have to do any weeding. And it's, it's ace because basically it goes back and nourishes the earth and the insects have somewhere to live over winter. Amazing. So, Sophie, I know you've got to go. So we'll say goodbye to you. I'm so sorry. Thank you for joining us. Can I say, She's got oh, to go and grow, she's got Love to go and pick her veg. Home. <laughs> oh hi Shay. Hi. It's a shame we're there, probably on at the last minute. Um so 2020 by so 2021 okay. the hottest year on record. Um July 2021 being the hottest July ever, which means that's the hottest month since records began in 1880. Um they are saying 11 percent of people, which is 800 million people, are vulnerable in the world to climate change impacts kind of quite instantly to droughts, floods, heat waves, extreme weather events and sea level rise. So it's not just in the UK. I mean, Nina, you've traveled around, you've been to America, you've been to India, Phil. I mean, have you, did, is it a huge difference that you've seen elsewhere? Oh, a massive difference. I think there's, you know, there are there are lots of people in India who are very educated about it. and But then there's the kind of poorer communities who don't have a choice. It's not like they have a choice to change how they live or where they live. And they're the ones that are affected the most when it comes to climate change. It does flash floods in Bangladesh and things like that. It's just, it's it's actually really, really horrific. Um, and so I think it, it, for me, it always comes down to education. You know, I've got teenage kids who, you know, have brought the education back to me. You know, we, because of the way our family functions, we, we need two cars because of our lifestyle. So we decided one of the cars now, you know, we either get rid or we change to electric, but it's so expensive. Electric cars are really expensive. But having said that, the government has given great subsidies towards electric cars, even the companies themselves. I mean, ours happens to be a Vauxhall. They gave a massive subsidy. So it worked out that actually costs the same to have a petrol car than it does to have an electric car. So also a lot cheaper to run. But on a personal note, this is my contribution. Please don't judge me. <laughs> you know, I'm partial to a bit of red wine. Uh, but I, I read somewhere that actually the bottles that these, you know, um, that the wine's kept in is is not carbon friendly at all. So I've been on the hunt to find bottles of wine that are like they're plastic inside, shaped with cardboard on the outside. So they look like wine <laughs> bottles, but they're actually made of cardboard. Thank you, me. <laughs> oh, well done. Or just go for the huge vats, the big boxes instead. <laughs> Why are you talking about just that? Glass Sorry, bottles. Glass. I thought I always thought glass bottles were good because they could be recycled. No, no. There's something about wine bottles themselves. Um, they are they, uh, whatever material they need to be made from in order to contain the the wine and look after it and be at the right temperature. This and that. They they actually are not uh, friendly for the environment no. at all. Well, there's so a big thing it's about worth masks looking at the into moment as well because there's so many masks obviously over COVID that now are completely. Dumped. But Lucinda, Australia. I mean, I, I know you're quite got, got some quite strong opinions about Australia and what's happening out there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just sorry because oh. um, our government just doesn't seem to get it. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But it's um, it's they don't get it. Uh, you know, this the at the cop just you know it's just happened um the climate change conference um the this australian stall was sponsored by an oil and gas company oh my god it, they they don't they they don't they don't get it and um it's frightening here i'm scared about summer happening yeah um you know I, uh, I think Bush that's the thing now yeah. isn't it is that scan people who live in places that flood easily now it's all happening almost every year i mean they can't even sell yeah. their houses and stuff it's yeah, and in australia obviously you've got the the bushfires which have become bigger and bigger year on year on year yeah 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 well we had those incredible bushfires in uh 
you know, um, 2020. And, um, and they were like firestorms and they were like nothing anyone had ever seen before. And, and what happens is there's, there's, there's no topsoil after these things. That's, it burns the topsoil away and it makes all of this land, you know, ungrowable, unarable, you know, just, and yeah, and, uh, and we seem to have a government that's fixated with fossil fuels and, and, um, and it doesn't seem to understand that we could be at the front of renewables here. We've got so much sun. Um, solar is amazing. We have no um, electric vehicle incentive here at all. Wow. No. Well, come on, Nothing. Australia. Um, do, you will... think that, do you think that might be distance, though? Because in Australia, nobody thinks anything about driving two hours, do they? Because it's so it's so spread out. And There's it not might be cars on the road, like uh, driving two hours in, you know, in London, you could only be going somewhere. Actually, mm. you could walk in 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it is. It, I think, look. I think we are beholden to these things um, because we are, uh, you know, blessed, I suppose, um, with all of these minerals in the ground and all of this coal and all of this stuff. But it, it they're they're building more coal mines now, and and when we're gonna be, you know, I see, unfortunately, that Australia could be like a real pariah mm. um, with, if they just keep on going and. Um, and don't do anything about it. I think it's terrible. So um, well, let's hope that. Let's hope they. Let's hope, they, sorry, let's hope they'll learn something at the conference and come back. Yeah. Like I, I, I don't think they're capable of learning oh, anything. My dog's furious. My dog's <laughs> furious with Australia in the background. Um, we're just going to go through to <laughs> end you. some things that people can do out there very easily on their own because I think people think uh, there's not much they can do. Firstly, you can use your voice, everyone. So it is up to you who we elect. Um, decisions on environment, green spaces, roads, cycling, infrastructure, waste, recycling. Um, so basically get information before you vote. I know I'm a bit of a person that doesn't do that. Um, eat le less meat and dairy, um, uh, which is a huge thing. I know, Nicola, we've already said you grow your own veg. Lucinda, did you, do you eat meat or dairy? Yes, I do a little bit of both, but, you know, we're trying to cut down. Yeah, well, um, I, to, I didn't realise it was such a huge thing, actually, for, for climate change, to be honest. I'm quite... Uh, Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah no, stupid cattle, on that. You know, and the methane as well. And, you know, there's that. that's a really big thing with cattle production and land clearing. All of these things add together. So, And the do they have in Australia, like MS over here, do now a whole plant food section... Uh, some of it is lovely, actually, and I'm trying to persuade yes. myself to do it. You have you have things like that. We do, we do. Yeah, yeah. We do, but we're very, you know, beholden to our um, meat um, here and our barbies and our. Oh yeah, of course. It's not quite That's the same. Absolutely. Stick a stick a plant on the barbie. <laughs> Yeah, but I think they, they said um, that you don't have to you don't have to cut it out completely. But it just if everybody Reduce. did like yeah. half and half, yeah, it'd, it'd be great. Yeah. And yeah, uh, they're yeah, also yeah. saying that we should be encouraged to eat insects, but the Western world obviously can't be encouraged to eat them. I mean, Nina, could you see yourself snacking, chowing down on a bag of, you know, locusts? <laughs> Actually, I have to tell you, so a friend of ours from France, um, he had a bag of snack crickets. Yeah, like you can buy them in Sainsbury's. Crickets. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What? Yes, really? you can buy them in oh Sainsbury's. Yeah, Paul, my little no husband way. loves them. Well, well I, I've never tried that before, but and I because it was just the look of it, I couldn't do it. No, I so know. he said, "Okay, close your eyes." I did. I took a bite, and it was one of the most delicious things I've ever had. Oh, wow. So I highly recommend it. And high in protein, low in fat. <laughs> well, I will just say we won't have any insects to eat if they keep spraying pesticides on them. So maybe no. Fair enough. address that as well. Yeah. Um, now, yes. cut, cut back on flying is another thing, and I do think lockdown and Zoom might have helped that, especially for business people who constantly travelled for work, that now, obviously, even my boss was persuaded that, yeah, we can do stuff via Zoom, like today, we don't all have to meet up, so hopefully that might change travel slightly, um, but obviously, I didn't know this, <coughs> if you fly business class, which I'm not sure whether any of us do, uh, your carbon <laughs> footprint is apparently three times higher than someone in economy. Wow. How is that possible? I, I don't Explain know. that. I don't know. <laughs> um, because it's taking up more space, perhaps that's what it is. More space. Oh, probably, <laughs> yes, more right. space, right. yeah. Yes. Oh, well yeah. done, Lucinda, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. So I saw, yeah, so um, 
Yes. Yeah, and also that. They're probably the people who own the oil companies, so therefore they are. <laughs> <laughs> they're probably yeah. the only people who aren't afford paying it. for their flights. That's what I noticed about business. Yeah, <laughs> and they probably they probably eat more, drink more, get probably more expensive cars to the airport. I mean, it's probably all of that knocked up, isn't it? And their house is four times oh, bigger. Let's not hate on the business people. <laughs> I'm flying out next week. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, but but you're you're fine, Nina, because you're going first. <laughs> I didn't want to say it is a private jet. Oh, <laughs> you're lying. It's cattle class. Isn't it? yeah. <laughs> a private Damn jet. It, one you know, you know one per family. <laughs> um, leave the car at home is another thing and walk. Now, again, that's kind of, I mean, I know where we are, Nicola, where we live. There's not even a bus that runs through where we are. So you have no choice. So that's another thing that needs to be looked at, I think, everywhere. Mm. Because if you're stuck, at, if you're in the city centre, it's very easy, like in London even. But if you're slightly out of London, the trains become less and so more people are going to jump in their cars. So that's still something that we can't really do. Yeah. I mean, I was, and I, plus, can you imagine us, if my, me on a bike up the hill in Tong Village? I mean, I'd be one less carbon footprint because I wouldn't be here. <laughs> get a horse, get a horse. Get a horse. I, th I think the main problem a lot of a lot of countries have though is the infrastructure isn't there to go green yet. You know, it's like the electric cars. It's all great, but if all of us went out and got an electric car today, the, the grid would crash because it wouldn't be able to cope with everybody charging. So I think I think there's a lot of work within countries that they have to do to their infrastructure in order to help so us go green. Change. Yeah. Well, I like the yeah. idea of we all do have to do those little bits, but ultimately it's down to the people making the decisions for the country. They have to do a hell of a lot, and we will foot the cost because nobody invests do they certainly yeah, in our country no, exactly. are notorious for not investing in their infrastructure but that's the point is it is the big wigs it's those billionaires need to hand out some cash now yeah one thing anyone can do the woodland trust are aiming to plant 64 million trees in the next 10 years we need our trees obviously because they absorb carbon dioxide as do forests trees regulate temperatures in urban areas and can reduce flood risk and of course, are vital in uh, habitats for insects, animals, birds and amphibians. So uh, I think that's something anyone can do. If you've got a garden that's got room for a tree, go out and plant a tree. You can do that this year. You can do that now. And at least that's one positive thing you've done. Um, we obviously don't need to plant 64 million and uh, cut consumption and waste. So everything we use as a consumer has a carbon footprint. So avoid single use items and fast fashion. I actually love vintage furniture and vintage clothing. Do we all? So, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, I don't so. remember actually the last time I bought something. It, well, we've been in lockdown. So, yeah, so it's been a while. Yes, <laughs> but yes. I just love to go, um, you know, vintage shopping and and um, secondhand shopping and charity shop shopping so much more. I find it so much more satisfying. Yeah. Uh, you always wonder and who's just... died in this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what have they got in their pockets? I got yes. a pair of jeans the other day. cost me $4. There was 50 bucks in the pocket. What? Yay. Wow. Yay. There we <laughs> go. That's a reason enough to go vintage clothes shopping. Well, Don't it's been amazing. It's been amazing to have you all on on this special edition uh, for Climate Change and for Soap Crossover Week. Uh, lovely to meet you all and uh, see you all soon. Bye. Nice to meet you guys. Bye. 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 Plant a tree. Plant a tree. <laughs> <laughs>